uh, thanks for this um, nice opportunity to be here and to talk about interesting issues and topics. Um, when speaking about uh, women's participation uh, in the revolution, we usually speak as an unprecedented participation of women and youth. But uh, uh, I guess when we say unprecedented, uh, unprecedented uh, we, uh, we show that we don't know our history well because our women were very active during the, all the history of our um, uh, country and participating in all kinds of uh, activities. What was wrong before this revolution was the discourse about the women's participation. Uh, you know, women in Armenia faced uh, the same uh, problems and issues women uh, face in other patriarchal societies. I mean, every time when um, huge participation of society is needed, women are included. And then, not only women, but also histories and narratives about women are just uh, forgotten and excluded. Um, I remember uh, several years ago when having a huge demonstrations against uh, uh, pension reforms, there were many women participating in it, but every time talking about the participants of these uh, rallies, uh, the media, and not only media, were talking about boys demonstrating uh, against the reforms. This time, this was uh, a um, very good and huge step forward in the context of this equal um, participation and equal discourses about men and women participating in the revolution. And I guess the reason is that this time women participating in the revolution were stressing the importance of women's participation. What I mean by saying this is that um, uh, usually uh, women participating um, in uh, civil society, in uh, political life, unfortunately had patriarchal ideologies and they just repeated men-centered uh, discourses. And th this time uh, we had women from the civil society who, uh, who were, uh, who had this acknowledgement of the importance of equal participation and their speeches were about fair and uh, equal rights of men and women. And uh, what we have now after the year or half a year <laughs> after the revolution, if we um, look at the numbers, they are not as much impressive uh, because we have only one minister in the government and we have only 25% of uh, women in the parliament. Uh, you know, Electoral Code of Republic of Armenia uh, says that any party should include more than 75% of any gender in their list. And when speaking of any gender, we all understand that it's about uh, male and uh, they have to include 25% of women. And uh, this number suggests that they just uh, included as much women as the code um, just forced them to do. Uh, but, uh, and, and we have uh, one mayor of a city now, uh, and um, interestingly, she is a mayor of one of the most patriarchal uh, cities, I can say, in Armenia, Fecimiazin, yes. Uh, but uh, what is um, interesting, um, what we had during the uh, previous parliament, we had par women parliamentaries um, who never spoke I can really say never spoke about uh, women's rights. One case was a woman who drafted the law about gender equality and then said she was sorry, she just didn't know what that meant. Uh, she, she, probably you remember. 
uh, yeah. But now we have uh, more women and more men in the parliament who acknowledge this importance of um, women's empowerment and gender equality. We have a majority of women who are uh, well educated, open-minded, and who don't speak about themselves as uh, uh, women who can cook tasty tolmas, as previous parliamentaries did, in order to uh, show that they are not only parliamentaries, but also uh, housewives and uh, good citizens. Uh, so in this context, we have really in a very interesting and new situation when we have first lady who speaks about importance of women's participation in peace building and who initiates a movement women for peace when we have prime minister who in the parliament speaks about the importance of uh, gender equality and women's empowerment uh, when we have men and women parliamentaries who uh, speak about this issue uh, but we uh, can't say that numbers reflect this good and optimistic uh, scenario. Uh, what is wrong about it uh, is because uh, when speaking about gender equality, we can't rely only on political will. We can, um, we should um, see what's wrong in our uh, perceptions about women's participation. For example, uh, when uh, asking Nicole Pashinyan why so few women are uh, in his government, the, in the first government there were two women. Uh, he said um, they reached out many women, but, but uh, they declined. So we have to research why more women than men declined the positions they were offered. Uh, w what obstacles uh, they have uh, in order to not to decline. Uh, just an example, we have now a drastic uh, reform in the community sectors, enlargement of communities. And what we did, what we have now in, in the sense of uh, gender perspective of uh, these reforms, we have now few women in the rural areas uh, wanting to have these uh, leadership positions. Why? Because it's much more easier to be in a leadership position in your little community than to be in that position when you have to go to work to the neighboring community and uh, uh, having these um, leadership skills uh, to deal with uh, citizens from other communities as well. So when uh, drafting this law, I guess no one would thought about this outcome but uh, this is the example how uh, we should deal with the issue of gender equality. I mean, every time we are drafting any law in any field, we, were just, we, we have to, from start, speak and think about gender equality and not at the end when we have uh, not nice outcomes. Uh, civil society, um, there is a discourse about the uh, now uh, civil society participating in the um, governmental issues and uh, having uh, lack of um, participants in civil society. But I guess it somehow uh, doesn't reflect the reality because yes, we have many participants of civil society in the government and in the parliament, but uh, first, uh, not all the civil society has gone and second, even if it isn't a bad thing, because changing the leadership is good not only for the government, but also for the civil society, and having new, new faces, new generation, and uh, new names, it's also good for civil society too. But we have uh, another obstacle uh, now, but I guess uh, it will remain in the past in a few months uh, also. Um, Many uh, in civil society um, still 
um, believe this revolution and this government is theirs too, and so it's somehow difficult to criticize. Uh, but I guess it's changing because uh, we all understand that criticizing is good for the government. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, in the near future we will have another situation in Armenia, uh, refreshed civil society, uh, more powerful government and parliamentaries, and criticism in in its place. 